if you like, maybe not in such a big scale. Um, you remember I was showing you some uh, sheet bending features of Fusion, where we were having like a kind of rounded surface, and then we were folding and unfolding. Uh, one thing that we did uh, with Laser Duo was we bended a lot of aluminum. Uh, I mean, the bending were not really fascinating because they were uh, just uh, following uh, an angle. And in, in that part, we had only uh, one bending. Um, so, but this shows you a little bit of the process of how you could do it. Um, and then I will show you a little bit in Fusion how you can, could make maybe a more complex design. So in this case, um, what you could do is to mill um, a mold. Uh, we were using this um, hard foam that is used uh, in isolation for construction. It's the one that you can easily find in, in hobby. We should have some um, um, leftover parts in the fab house in Camp Limford. Um, and then once you 3D mill a mold um, using the similar techniques that we use for uh, making the molds in, in molding and casting, for which regards the generation of the toolpath with the roughing and the finishing and so on, then you can place the aluminum on top of it, and then you can put this inside the uh, vacuum forming machine. William, we were doing this together. Yeah, as far as I remember. No? Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Of course, uh, please take care that the aluminum is sharp uh, after being, in this case, CNC milled. So we covered all of this with um, um, a special kind of fabric that was isolating this um, um, a plastic. Um, uh, sheet with the with the with the surface of the aluminium, and then we were compressing this one here. One thing that we uh, realized with, with Ahmed when we tried also to bend the first parts, uh, and then we made a lot of experimentation, um, is that there is a sort of um, spring back um, tension on the material, so there is an angle that the material will come back. So in this case, what we were doing, we were having an angle which was more than they wanted angle. And then the spring back of the material was the right angle. So there was a certain amount of offset in the angle. Was it so about that, three degrees or so, right? Uh, well, if you see this image over here, the spring back was much more- Oh, was that the spring back? Yeah, it was changing oh. a lot also depending on the, you know, the, the amount of aluminum that you were bending over here. Uh, so the length of the bending, and also the shape of the object itself, because the, the machine was able to apply maybe more force over here and less over here. Right. It was like uh, what we did with Hamid, we were bending like some small parts and then we were looking the spring back and then we were um, adjusting the mold in Fusion and then redo it again. What happened was that at the end, uh, we didn't have any perfect part, let's say, with the spring back, but then with a little bit of flexibility, we were just screwing the parts of the frame and they were taking the final the final shape. Um, so the machine is quite strong. This was 1.5 millimeter aluminum and it was bended quite nicely. Um, so you could try to bend some thin aluminum foils, for example. Uh, you can even try to bend a D-bond, which is this uh, material. I was looking to it just, uh, sorry, D-bond just yesterday. Uh, with my Tunisian students, uh, you know, this uh, aluminum composite that is super cheap. I have a lot of scrap pieces here if you want. Um, it's made out of uh, two thin foils of aluminum, something like 0 0.2 millimeters. And then in the center, there is um, uh, plastic. This is a very strong material used for uh, street signs. So it's very uh, robust in case of like uh, harsh weather conditions and temperature changes and so on. And uh, you can bend it uh, with the same, uh, let's say, um, solutions, the same process here. So you have uh, a mold under it and then you bend it. Or what you can even do with this one is uh, you can just chamfer a specific uh, area like here. So we have some of these chamfering tools that you can use. And then guys, according to the angle of the chamfering here, you can bend the part uh, with more or less uh, degrees. So you can make your own folding structures like this um, and then create your own housing or kind of uh, nice uh, low polygon um, structures uh, and so on. So, 
you can even try with some other materials if you want. Uh, one thing that is not really recommended with this uh, machine uh, is that um, um, this machine it's able to 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 follow um, a very let's say um, 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 specific very let's say in this case um, horizontal. Like you see this wall here, it's able to to follow this shape up to the bottom over here. But if you have like a rod, imagine like if you put a rod inside this one, if you have two high walls, let's say, um, or two tiny spots uh, uh, on top, that this could break, or maybe it will not even arrive to the bottom here. So consider the the, the shape that you have that is not like uh, it's not like having like the the you know the legs of a, of a star uh, pointing upwards. Uh, for example, actually with uh, with uh, with Ahmed, I broke one of these uh, uh, things because I was having a very narrow uh, uh, angle in the shape, and then this was very high, and some some things just uh, went off this protective layer, and then once there was a small uh, you know hole here, the whole thing opened completely. Okay, so this was more or less the process that you can go through. Um, I was doing just before some experimentations uh, in Fusion. I think you might remember the Kubri things that we were doing some time ago, but we can look again together if you want, just a little bit. Um, so um, when you open Fusion, you can go to the design workspace, uh, and then you can go to the um, uh, sheet metal uh, section. And inside here, you have all the tools um, to work with uh, material bending. In this case, it's much more for metal bending. Um, the nice thing about Fusion is that uh, it has already some, some rules uh, for the bending of the metals. By default, you have a library of material over here. And you have I don't know, steel, aluminum, stainless steel, and so on. And you already have some limits uh, of the thickness. Um, the K factor to avoid that you have uh, some parts that are compressed or um, uh, too much stretched, for example. Um, so you have the bend conditions and so on. So this means basically that everything that you're going to bend here will not be shown if these rules are not respected. So it's more or less uh, the feasibility of the bending. So uh, here you are free to edit these materials or to add new materials um, that you could try. So, but let's have a look how we can work with this workspace a little bit. Um, so one thing that you can do is, for example, to create um, just a, a plate. So you can have a sketch and then you create a plate. We create a plate maybe just 100 by 100 and then you extrude this plate for example two millimeters over here and then in fusion here in the sheet bending uh, you have a, a feature that can convert an existing uh, flat surface to a uh, sheet metal so if you click on this one for example then you select this one um, but i think the thickness is wrong because it's not in thicknesses that there was uh, seeing in the material, so I will make it 1.5. Yeah, 1.5. Okay, so we have to respect the rules. Uh, so if you have the material with 1.5, you have to use 1.5. So convert to sheet metal. You click here and you press OK. Okay, you see that this small icon changes. So this means that this is uh, a body that uh, you can apply bending to it because uh, it's uh, converted. So in this case, what you could do is, for example, you can create uh, flanges um, uh, in your object. So you click on this one, for example, and you select, for example, a specific edge, like this one over here. And then once you select the edge, you can just move the arrow to create a nice bending over here. So, and here on this small pop-up, you can change all the settings of the bending. So you can play with the angle uh, of the bending so uh, you can have a bending with a different uh, angle over here. You can play with the, the bend position, so you can have it inside, outside, um, and so on. 
um, I think if you have 90 degrees, uh, you can even go a tangent, for example, here. So this means that this takes the edge directly of this one, and then the bending is tangent. Yeah, it's tangent uh, to the original uh, edge of the part over here and so on. So if something doesn't fit, then Fusion is going to throw here an error and tell you, okay, this is not uh, possible. So you can play a lot with that. And uh, you can, can, of course, make as many flanges as you want. So you can have another flange over here, for example. So you can then have an housing or whatever you like. Um, maybe like this, you know, and so on. And you can combine things um, like here, for example. Yeah. And then what you can do is you can work with these uh, bodies as traditional bodies. So you can have, of course, like holes. Uh, you can make any kind of sketches on top of them and so on. And then you have the possibility to fold and unfold the shapes. So maybe let's make this uh, slightly more complex. Let's create maybe another flange just over here. OK. And then you can. Uh, go here and say, for example, unfold. So you have to select a stationary entity uh, on which uh, the other folding will be unfolded. So you can select, for example, this uh, stationary entity, then you can select the bands, and then you say, okay, this bands has to be flat. So you can fold it and unfold it. You can unfold also this one, um, and so on. So you can play with that as much as you wish. And then another nice thing that you can do is you can go here. Um, um, so here in create flat pattern. And then uh, given um, uh, this uh, um, set of bending and flanges, it will make for you a flat design with the specific points where the bending should happen. So you select this one, you press OK. It calculates all the unfolding of it. And then these are the lines. Uh, that have to be bended. So the bending goes from here to here, and this is the center of the bending. So this could also help for, for you to create a mold. Uh, then is, there, is there any way automatically to make the tool that you need to bend around? Uh, not that I know. You mean the, the mold under it? Yeah. <clears throat> not yeah. that I know. Uh, but in this case, it would be rather easy to make, for example. Well, yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah. It would be easy. Yeah. But you can play um, more with the maybe combine, um, you know, combine and um, here. So you can do intersections, combining, and so on. And then you yeah. can. Okay. Is this Daniele or is is it just me? No, every once in a while it grabs it. Uh, okay. Um, maybe I take the opportunity and quickly show you something on my screen. Go, go, go. So um, I, Pretty share black the, right now. I share the audio as well. It was a dark Not and yet? stormy night. Okay. Um, so Ooh, this is a technique kind of I'm creepy. using. Can, can you see my screen? Yeah. yeah, so this is a technique I'm using for making paper models. So it starts by making a 3D model of somebody, which is a, a simplified process. It's a very coarse model. But this is Santi, which was my Daniele in, in Barcelona. And this is Luciana that um, all of you registered for Fab Academy with, like she's the, the mother of Fab Academy. And here in Fab Barcelona, we made some paper masks. So they're more or less um, a real size. And this is Luciana with Luciana's hat and Santi with Ferdi's hat. And if you ever wanted to see Ferdi with boobs, um, this is the place to look. <laughs> and um, and on my website, um, there's a tutorial that I made for um, Fab, Fab 12, I think. 
where you um, where you can see a step by step instruction on on how to make those models. So basically, you start by downloading my um, uh, my file. I think I even had I, I even made a model of of Neil. You can download. On in in China, I was wearing Neil's head, um, being on stage on the big stage in China, and yeah, it was was really fun. And um, so basically, you just um, it's kind of like clone brushing um, the images onto the three D model. Like you have like a spray paint, and you clone from one image and spray on the other. And so bit by bit, you complete the 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 whole three D model by just copying from the images and in the end you arrange them on a sheet on a sheet of paper you add some orientation marks because um, once you print it to, on paper your vinyl cutter has to recognize the orientation of your of your paper and this is done with those orientation marks um, and then you can score and cut the paper and you're left with like maybe five hours of gluing and, um, <laughs> and figuring out how this big puzzle belongs together. Um, it's going to take a whole day, but um, uh, once you get it going, it's super fun. <laughs>